Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about another data type which is dictionary data type. This is the last data types you're going to learn. Previously we have discussed several data types, mostly list data type, tuple and set data type. So make sure you understand the comparison between these four primary data types including the dictionary one. Okay, so what is a dictionary data type? It is a data type that can be used to multiple values or, or it can store multiple values or items and it can store both character and numeric as well. Where the data are presented in key and values pairs. Well, that's a little bit different ways compared to other data structures. It means your data values can be called through your key name. For example, age 25. Here, age is the key name and 25 is the value. This data type is unordered, means you cannot order it. Changeable means you can replace, remove any items. It doesn't allow duplicate values or repeated values in the dictionary data type. So, so let me show you that uh, with a few examples here. So here I have the first example, which is let's say, let's say I've created a variable x, okay? And inside the x variable, I have the dictionary data type, which contain, initially you have the name as your key name, and the value, you have a character, which is my name, save. And then you have another key, which is age, and which has a value, 27, and then another key name, phone, and that's, it, that's the phone number. So you have three key name here, and three values, which can be both numeric and, and character. Now, if I run the x variable here, you can see that it worked very well. And then again, if I ask what type of variable x is, and if I run that again, the built-in function type works very well here. It says dictionary. Okay, good. Now, if I want to access some item with the key name, let's see if it, it worked or not. Let's run the variable x. I want to have the key name age. And if I hit the run button again here, you can see it says for the age key name our value is 27. So it means to access some items from the dictionary, you can call the key name to have your value. Again, similarly, uh, let's say I want to update a key here. I can do that as well. So here the name is says Saif. Now let's say I want to replace the name with another name Habib Rahman. Now if I run that, you can see our variable x has been replaced with a new name. And to call or replace any key, you need to use these third brackets. Inside that, you need to mention the key name, whatever you want to replace. Like what we did earlier for other data structure as well. And like other data structure, you can use some built-in functions as well. For example, you can use the update function which is used to replace or add one dictionary with another dictionary. Okay, let's see how it worked. Let's say I'm created another variable called y. It's actually the same variable with, with, um, with some name, age, and phone number as well. And let's say from this y variable, I want to update that to a x variable, okay? And, and see, now the y variable has been updated to x. Well, in fact, here, let me change the value here. Let's say the age is 45 now. And let me change the phone number as well. Okay, let me change the phone number as well so that we can clearly see how the updated works. So now that's what the Y. So let me run the Y so that it looks a little bit different than X. Okay, now if I want to update the X with Y, uh, you can see now X has been replaced with Y. Previously, X was like that, like the name was these, the age was 27, now it's 45, the phone number was 1793428, it goes like this, now it looks like 6558. So that's how you can use the update built-in function. Similarly, I have another example here, you can try it out on your own. Okay, then again, we have the removing items functions. So for removing, you have multiple functions you can use, like one, you can use like the pop, built-in functions so if i use the if i use this function that means let's say i want to remove h key from the variable x let me run that and let me see what happens see the h key has been removed 
Now only two remaining key has been displayed here. One is name, another one is phone number. Similarly, we can use another built-in functions that call delayed. For delayed, we use DEL only to call the function name. Now if I hit the run button again, let's say I want to delete the salary one. Although I'm not sure the salary has been created or not. Okay, here, here, in fact, salary is has been created in the Z variable. So let me update that with the Z variable. And now X has salary and weight as well. Now let's say I want to remove salary from the X. And if I if I hit the run button for this function delete, and you can see now salary has been removed from X. Good. So Make sure you remember that how to use the dealer function here. So for the dealer functions, we need to write the function name, then the variable name, then the key name. But for the pop function, it wasn't exactly the same. For that case, we need to write the variable name, then dot, then, then the function name, and then the key name, whatever you want to remove. Okay. So similarly, you can use another built-in function that called clear. By clearing, it means you are deleting all the available key name and values inside the x variable so that's how you can remove items in the dictionary similarly you can use some other functions as well like you can copy any items in the dictionary so it means um it means let's say i have i have x variable here let me round that here and if i want to copy that with a new name y you can see that works as well so that actually works similarly like the update functions Okay, good. Now, if I want to see the item's name um, available in a particular variable, I can use the functions or methods called items. And you can see it displays all the items available like name, age, and phone number. And interestingly, if you want to access the values only, not the key name, you can do that as well. So you can do that by calling the values functions. So if I hit the run button again, you can see it says in the x variable, you have the values like Saif 23-0179-3428. So that's a little bit of ideas about dictionary data types. For all data types, guys, there are a lot of built-in functions that are available that you can use uh, for, for some purposes or tasks you want to do. Okay, so thank you very much. See you in the next video.